break down the hipscape for you. First, I'm going to show you how it's uh, commonly done, and you may have seen a lot of videos now on trying to correct the hipscape or the hip escape. So when you start class, you'll see people two feet in, and I've done it for many decades that way. They lift their arms and they slide their body. They switch, and that's the motion that they do. But we find a lot of inherent problems in that because once you start uh, sparring or rolling, uh, you'll notice that anytime you lift your elbows, you're in a bad position. So that would be the first thing that we would have to correct. So we would bring our, our elbows close to our sides and you will notice as you start to practice jiu-jitsu, uh, elbow to knee connection and elbow to your body saves you from being submitted. So now I would add that part, still do the first part mistake, but correct, correct hand position. So this is how it would look. with my elbows in. Then the next part I would like to correct would be the sliding part, which means I would have to add a bridge. So if I add a bridge this way with the top leg, I can't do a bridge to the next side because my leg is up. So I would automatically have to start to learn to bridge with the bottom leg, so that would correct that. So I wouldn't have two feet because now I'm flat on my back. I would still have to stay on my side and my bottom leg would become my bridging leg. When I'm up on my shoulders and I haven't slid yet, I'm going to actually escape my hips. And I need to move my hips away. And now you see I'm in that defensive posture still. My elbows were able to stay. I'm able to push and frame on arms or, or hips or knees. And now this is going to bring me up and I hipscape the other way. So it would be bottom leg, bridge, and press. So it's my hips that escape and my hands I can pump, but I'm always in a defensive position. So let's look at it one more time close up. And it's a really important detail that you defend with the bottom leg and not the top leg. So let's say for example, someone had my back and they staple my foot down, but they're behind me in side control or going for my back. My reaction is to, to move this leg, I, I cannot escape. But see, my reaction is to move my bottom leg. So even when someone's attacking me from behind, I'm always used to using my bottom leg to get position. And then I think the last point would be, if you move both legs like this, like the old kind of style, if I'm trying to slip my leg back around the body and I'm blocking myself. I'm actually literally blocking myself from trying to get my leg around. But because I'm so used to making that space, I can get my legs around the body. So one more time, this is how your hipscape uh, should look in my opinion to be scientifically sound. Elbows close to the body, elbow knee connection, and a springy bridge leg that moves your hips. And when you're done, your legs are never straight so that they won't be smashed. And that's my interpretation of the hip escape or hip escape. Peace and love, strength and honor. Samir Sun here out of Global Martial Arts Academy representing Ontario Top Team.